Alright, the tier system in pet battles was introduced by Hiryu, and it's just a really nice way to categorize battle pets based on how good they are with a simple number. There are technically three tiers of pets, but uh, and that would be tier 3, tier 2, and tier 1. And then tier 0 is reserved for pets who are just broken and need to be fixed. Tier 3 pets are going to be average pets that you might find out in the wild that don't really have anything special going for them. Maybe just a random flyer, say a tick bird, hatchling, a tiny flame fly, just a singing cr cricket, ravisaur, hatchling, just, you know, random pets. Mm, ravisaur, hatchling might be tier two. But just, you, you you understand what I'm saying. It's a It's a random pet that doesn't really have anything going for it and isn't going to perform all that well in PvP unless it's carried by stronger pets. And even then, it, you would be better off using other pets. Um, a tier 2 pet is going to be something that has some nice synergy, but really doesn't doesn't stand out compared to stronger pets. Example of this might be, say, the Nightmare Whelpling. He has two abilities that can debuff your enemy's healing, but he's slow, he doesn't hit that hard, doesn't have that much health, and he's overall not that strong. Another example of a tier 2 pet would be a frog. They counter undeads, who you see a lot in the meta, but there's really nothing all that special about them. The fastest frog has only 325 speed, which is meh. At best, you'll, you'll usually have a speed tie in the Legion meta because there are so many fast pets in the meta. And he has frog kiss, which is a chance. It's RNG. You know, you can play RNG and hope to get lucky but in the end you're only going to win a couple games that way so uh forest sproutling would be a good example of a tier two pet he has a heal he's an elemental he has a sons of the root ability and he has club so with a power power breed he might be able to you know be kind of tanky and d dish out some damage but he's slow really not going to perform all that well against faster pets that can just outspeed him and kind of control how the battle goes. Then a tier one pet is going to be what you would call any pet that really, really stands out. Maybe it's not broken. Maybe it is. There's kind of a wide variety of tier one pets, anywhere from the Warbot, who is nobody would really say broken, to the... Uh, Orphan Felbat, who is arguably almost tier zero. He's so strong. So there is kind of a wide variety, but basically they are the pets that really stand out. You'll see the most of them in the meta, and if you pair them with just about any other pets, they will typically do good on their own or synergize very well with other pets for strong teams in the meta. An example of a pet that is tier 1 because he synergizes well would be the Blighthawk. He is the best Cyclone user, and since the classic Clone Dance team with the Blighthawk, the Jade Mist Dancer, and the Emperor Crab is such a strong team, I have a whole video dedicated to it because I personally think it's the strongest team in the beta right now. The Blighthawk is considered tier 1 just because he synergizes so well with this really strong team. Then other pets like the Fiendish Imp are just so good on their own. It doesn't really matter what team you put him with. He's going to just stand out by himself. So this list is going to cover all of the tier 1 pets in Legion 7.2.5. From my personal opinion, based on what I see in the meta. But there's there most of these pets are, aren't going to be very argued over. They are very strong. And then I will finish with a couple tier 0 pets that are... Not even arguably, they are 100% broken and need to be fixed. But that's okay. That's what our, that's what this community is for: is trying to figure out how to balance the game. And then I'll finish off with a couple honorable mentions: pets that didn't quite make the cut that some pet battlers might argue are tier one. And I would say no, I don't think so because, well, I'll explain when I get there. So to start off the list. We are going to start with the Mechanical Panda and Dragonling. He's always been good. He's probably the worst he's ever been here in Legion, and he is still a perfectly good pet. Um, he is countered very hard by the Fiendish Imp, who is one of the strongest Tier 1 pets who has seen a lot in the Legion meta, and that's the main reason why he is, why the Mechanical Panda and Dragonling is 
not seen as often as the other tier one pets but he is still tier one decoy is a very strong ability and the mechanical panda and dragonling is one of the fastest pets with it he has thunderbolt which hits harder than a basic attack and does aoe damage and aoe is very useful it is not the flavor of the month for legion but it is still very very much useful and the mechanical panda and dragonling is a perfect counter for magic pets with his mechanical type and dragonkin damage being a double counter for magic pets so he's pretty strong not the strongest pet because his basic attack is weak to undeads which is the most popular pet for pvp pet battles but he is still a very strong pet nonetheless and will fit in very nicely with just about any team especially in aoe teams next on the list will be the wee bomination who has the cleave ability he's the only pet with this ability and in warlords of draenor it was straight broken in legion it was nerfed to do a correct and fair amount of damage based on his attack power cleave just does split damage uh and aoe damage to the enemy team and it's undead damage which is nice because humanoids are pretty popular in the meta he has a strong heal with consume corpse so if one of your pets has died you can use consume corpse and heal up about 900 to a thousand health because the we abomination has such a high health pool his consume corpse is especially useful one other trick that you can do is if you pair the we abomination with any haunt user then you can use your consume corpse while your pa your haunt user is haunting an enemy because your haunter counts as dead so nice little synergy that you can use there and it's really powerful the we abomination is probably the best pet with consume corpse and then for your third ability you can either either roll the dice with haymaker it's a 50 percent hit chance that can take out about a half of uh of an enemy's uh health but if you miss you get stunned so it's really not that good or you can take corpse explosion usually you will want to use corpse explosion so you can kind of utilize that ability on your undead round and leave a dot to keep ticking on the enemy but in general you'll be fine if you just spam cleave and then consume whenever you need to heal third on the list is going to be blight breath and he is another undead with aoe damage he's very very strong because he has acid rain and dreadful breath which are really good centered self synergy very few pets have acid rain and dreadful breath and the blight breath is the only undead with it making him the strongest acid rain dreadful breath user for your other ability you are kind of stuck with weaker abilities but you will be fine if you just spam acid rain on cooldown and then dreadful breath in between the acid rain cooldown if you do want to do single target damage most people say toxic smoke it's pretty nice because your dreadful breath is weak against beasts so if you are uh, countered by say an alpine foxling or eventual porcupine something with strong critter damage that is a beast type then you can use toxic smoke to hit them pretty hard and leave a dot for one round it only lasts for one round under acid rain so it is kind of counter synergy i personally like sleeping gus because acid rain is weak against magics and so having sleeping gas you have that 25 percent chance to sleep they're both pretty meh abilities but uh, toxic smoke is what most people will recommend you run sleeping gas is a bit more rng because if you get asleep it's really really good and if you don't it just doesn't do that much damage so blight breath is a very strong pet he can also run slime and toxic smoke or sleeping gas because slime is an attack that does undead damage and does almost as much as a double attack just because it has a one round cooldown so if you alternate between that and your and your second ability you can do more damage than if you were just spamming a single target attack but uh dreadful breath acid rain is what makes him tier one for sure next on the list is going to be the fossilized hatchling he is currently the best bone storm user graves used to be and he was nerfed to the point that if i'm playing graves i don't even use bone storm i always use graves destruction because of the utility to remove objects what makes the fossilized hatchling so good is he has a pretty nice attack power of 305 
So that Bone Storm hits for 211 on each of your enemies on a short three round cooldown. And he has an Ancient Blessing, so that 10% extra damage that you take back from Bone Storm can just be healed up with an Ancient Blessing. Also, he has a strong undead damage or a beast damage attack, so that if you're countered by critters, you can counter them right back. So he's just a very solid AoE undead pet that will fit well into any AoE team. Next on the list is the Fragment of Anger, who is another undead pet with AoE. Spirit Fire Beam has been nerfed substantially. It's, I believe, a 50% nerf in the damage that it puts out compared to what it used to do, but it was just broken before. Uh, maybe it's just a 25% uh, nerf, but it was a very heavy nerf. I think it used to do 230 damage uh, to all of the enemy pets on only a three-round cooldown. So now it's a pretty fair ability, still very strong, but not overpowered. He also has Soul Rush, which has his chance to stun, and then he has a strong elemental damage basic attack. The elemental basic attack is actually one of the things that makes him the most popular in PvP, in my opinion, because there are so few undead pets with elemental damage, and elemental strong against mechanicals and mechanicals are the second most popular type of pet in pvp fragment of anger is definitely not as good as he was in warlords of draenor but still a solid tier one pet that will synergize well with any aoe team next on the list are going to be the dire horns the best of these is the stunted dire horn because he does have the highest attack power with 325 attack power and a nice solid health pool. He is very slow, but what makes the, all the Dire Horns good is with the setup Primal Cry, Horn Attack, and Trihorn Charge, they basically don't care about being slow. With Primal Cry, you're going to be able to reduce the speed of almost every pet that you will ever see in the meta to slower than 252, so your Stunned Dire Horn will be faster than them. After they are slowed with Primal Cry, which also, by the way, hits for a lot of damage for an only three round cooldown aoe attack you can use horn attack which has a 50 percent chance to interrupt their turn and make them lose out on their turn on their on their turn which is really strong it go does grant them the resilience debuff but it's it's very very strong and, and super annoying to go up against and then try horn charge just goes first it hits way harder than a basic attack and has a 85 percent hit chance and a one round cooldown to compensate for it so if you miss it's a bummer, but it will land most of the time. It's a very strong pet, and the Stunted Direhorn is the best, but all the Direhorns basically function the exact same way. If you want to put him with the Dazzling Dance user, you can actually use Trihorn Sh Shield, which still lasts for three rounds, even though all other shields like this were nerfed to a two-round duration. The downside is it doesn't reduce that much damage, but it's still 172 damage reduction. It's very strong. So Dire Horns are going to fit in particularly well with an AoE team, but uh, they're just basically really annoying to go up against because they are rather RNG dependent, and if those interrupts do land, they're very, very annoying. Next on the list is going to be a specific team, the classic Clone Dance with the Blighthawk, the Jade Mist Dancer, and the Emperor Crab. Blighthawk is probably just a tier 2 pet, but I categorize him as tier 1 because he is so useful in the classic clone dance. He has Cyclone and a nice beefy 305 attack power to throw it out. He is the only undead pet with Cyclone. He has a choice between Consumed Corpse and Ghostly Bite, so if you're using him in clone dance, you'll usually want to use Infected Claw and Ghostly Bite, which are just really strong undead damage. So if you run into Humanoids, the Blighthawk will tear them apart. If you run into Aquatics, no problem. You just throw out down your Cyclone, and you swap out. Then you bring in the Jade Mist Dancer. Jade Mist Dancer is one of the strongest pets in Legion because he has Rain Dance. Rain Dance will buff your crit chance and hit chance by 50%. So when you throw down a Cyclone, it normally does... Uh, it, it normally will not hit very much because it only has a... 35% hit chance, and that's why it's that's kind of what it's balanced around. But when you throw up Rain Dance, it now has an 85% hit chance, so it's actually pretty unlikely that it will miss any of the pets. So it's strong AoE damage with Rain Dance up, 
then he can throw acid rain for more a aoe pressure and then that acid rain will buff his basic attack which is steam vent for 25 percent extra damage because it's aquatic so he's just a very strong pet and he's particularly strong because at 317 speed the speed speed jade mist dancer is actually faster than a tarot claw as long as you have a dazzling dance up on your team so he puts it at about 394 speed 394 395 which is just perfectly faster than the tarot claws 390 speed above its flying racial so that's what makes the jade mist dancer so good is he is particularly good at countering the meta also on a side note he is an elemental so bone serpents don't do very well against him because they can't depend on landing their nocturnal strikes because elementals are not blinded by darkness also his heal does full does full healing but that's not that important he's not a healing pet he's a damage pet and then of course there is the emperor crab the emperor crab is a very very powerful tanky pet who can either use shell shield and healing wave for incredible damage reduction he's really 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 hard to kill without strong flying damage or you can use whirlpool which hits really hard and he can still tank a lot of damage with his renewing mists or healing wave he also has surge which normally doesn't hit for very hard but with the emperor crab's 357 attack power that surge hits ridiculously hard it hits for 282 which is about the same as an average pet's basic attack and it always goes first does aquatic damage so if they, you're going up against a tarot claw who is strong against the emperor crab with his flying uh, alpha alpha strike if he uses his nature's ward it will transform him to an elemental type and now your surge hits extra hard what makes the emperor crab so strong in the classic clone dance team however is the jade mist dancer has acid rain and with acid rain your surge is going to first of all always go first and it's going to do 25 percent extra damage aoe teams are not all that popular in legion however they are still very powerful and very much viable one of the strongest counters to aoe teams is the frostwolf ghost pup he has a very high attack power of 325 so his haunting song will heal all allies for almost 300 health 276 to be exact so he has a very strong aoe heal he has a strong critter type basic attack so he will hit undead pets really hard and he has ghostly bite which hits humanoids really hard undeads and humanoids are two of the strongest and most popular types of pets in the pvp meta so the ghost pup is just a really really good tier one pet that counters a lot of the meta Gleam of Fawn is another pet that, preferably in the Power Power breed, counters AoE teams, although he's pretty good in any breed, Power Power and Speed Speed being the best. Power Power being the absolute best and the Tier 1 breed, he has 325 attack power, so his basic attack hits for between 289 and 434 critter damage, and does even more damage against undeads. He is rather weak against humanoids, but that's okay because undeads are more popular he has nature's ward and bleat so if you run into aoe teams you can throw up your bleat which has a four round cooldown just like haunting song however it doesn't heal for quite as much even though the gleam of fun and the frost wolf ghost pup have the exact same attack power so haunting song is just kind of overtuned honestly it needs to be brought back in line with the bleat but it's okay they're still both really really good and the what makes the gleam hoof fawn way better than the frost wolf ghost pup is he has nature's ward nature's ward is the ability that the tarot claw has that transforms you into an elemental and puts a hot on you for five rounds that hot on the gleam hoof fawn with the power power breed heals you for 138 health every single round whether you're on the front line or the back line so if you take some damage with your gleam hoof fawn no problem you can just throw up a bleat that will not only heal you but all of your allies for 258 damage then you throw up your nature's ward that hot is going to last for five rounds and you can just swap to the back line where you can't be hit by anything except aoe and if you're going up against an aoe team you're going to be doing fine because the gleam hoof finds super duper counters aoe teams with his bleat another pet that does really really well against aoe teams 
and probably does better than the Power Power Frost Wolf Ghost Pup and a Gleam Hoof Fawn is the Wicked Soul. What he has going for him is he has a Haunting Song, which doesn't heal for quite as much as the Ghost Pups or the Gleam Hoof Fawns at only 224 health to all allies. But he has a Speed Speed Breed. That Speed Speed Breed is faster than a Wicked Soul. So, sorry, not a Wicked Soul, a Fiendish Imp. <laughs> so, the uh, Wicked Soul can haunt imps before they can nether gate him out. That haunt does extra damage to humanoids and counts you as dead. So any pet with haunt is instantly a very strong AoE counter because while you're counted as dead, obviously you can't take AoE damage. In fact, you can't take any damage. So if you take any dots or Curse of Doom or anything on your Wicked Soul, you can kind of prolong how long it's going to be before that damage finally hits you by simply haunting. While you're haunting, you don't take any damage, so you can kind of stall out for four rounds, maybe wait for another AoE heal on your team to come off cooldown, or even an ability like, I believe it's called High Fiber. Um, yes, High Fiber from Little Leftovers or Pierre, and you can remove those dots you can do a lot of things during that time. So Haunt is a very tier 1 ability. All three pets that have Haunt, those being the Wicked Soul, the Ghastly Kid, and the Unborn Valk are tier 1, but the Wicked Soul is the strongest because he is the fastest, so he can actually dodge abilities with Haunt because he goes first, and he has that AoE heal, which is really, really, really strong. He is part of the strongest team in Legion, being the Wicked Soul Tarot Claw, Fiendish Imp, and uh, he's just a really, really, really strong tier 1 pet, arguably tier 0 right now, based on how good he is at countering some of the pets in the meta. However, the Ghastly Kid and the Unborn Valk deserve a mention since they are both tier 1 pets as well. The Ghastly Kid is very, very unique because he has Haunt and Ethereal, so those are two abilities that can dodge damage, especially if he's faster. He has strong Critter or Undead damage, so he can counter Humanoids or Undeads, so that makes him very strong. Typically you are going to run, want to run Hoof so you can go up against Undeads and counter them, and then you have Haunt which counters Humanoids. You can also use Ghostly Bite if you want, but Haunt is way better. Also, you can use Consume Magic instead of Ethereal, so you can remove Cyclones, remove Dots, remove Curse of Dooms, remove Haunts, remove a lot of things. You can't remove Decoys or Turrets. But you can remove a lot of things with Consume Magic, and it's a very strong ability. Ethereal typically is better, but it's uh, kind of a toss-up. They're both very strong. The Ghastly Kid is a very strong tier 1 pet. The Unborn Valkyr was the first pet introduced with Haunt, and she's still very strong, but she's definitely the weakest of the Haunt users because she's the slowest. She does have Curse of Doom in Haunt, so she can dish out the most damage, but uh, dishing out the most damage is not the most important thing in Legion. Honestly, speed is the number one stat in Legion. It's very important, so having a slow haunt user isn't as good as a fast one. Also, if you have a matchup between two haunt users and both of you use haunt on the same round, whoever haunts first will haunt the enemy, and then that enemy will kill itself. It'll just straight up die, not even use its racial, its undead racial, it just, it's gone. It's like it just, it's, it basically turns the fight into a 2v3. And so having the faster haunt user is obviously a lot better because you want to be able to go first with your haunt. Next on the list is the Warbot. The Warbot is a very strong pet with Minefield. Minefield is an item. It can, it's another item that can be removed by the Ghastly Kids Consume Magic, but most, most Ghastly Kids are going to be running Ethereal. It's a bit better. But uh, Minefield... The way it works, you lay it down and it's an item that will last for 9 rounds and the next time your opponent swaps in 
or has a you know ma makes it makes a swap to to bring in another pet that pet is going to instantly take from the warbot 690 mechanical damage so even more damage if it's a make if it's a beast type a little bit less if it's an elemental but still very strong damage and it basically is a very strong pet the warbot is a very strong pet for countering haunt users because he can use minefield extra plating and missile his missile just hits pretty hard it's nice against beasts and he can you throw it on a minefield while he's about to be haunted so that the next pet that swaps in after the haunt will take that damage then he could throw up extra plating to mitigate the damage from the haunt and or the curse of doom from the unborn valk the warbot's especially strong in the legion meta because there is so much of an emphasis on using your abilities that are on that are big cooldowns or heals and then swapping into the back line so a team that likes to swap a lot is going to suffer tremendously against a minefield user and the warbot is the best because he has the highest attack power of any minefield user with a tie i should probably add to the rotten little helper but the rotten little helper is a humanoid so he takes extra damage from undeads who are the most popular pet and he doesn't have extra plating so he's not able to tank very well he's he's not able to tank at all all he has is a humanoid racial so the warbots tier one and the rotten little helper is tier two Next on the list are the trap users. There are three of them being Little Ragnaros, the Magma Rageling, and the Curious Wolvar Pup. Little Ragnaros was the first pet with traps, followed by the Curious Wolvar Pup, and the Magma Rageling is the, the easiest to obtain, simply being a pet from Raiding with Leashes 4. Uh, the Magma Rageling and Little Ragnaros both have the ability Magma Trap, and the way that these traps work is you just put it down it's an item that can be removed but as soon as it is either removed or triggers it will instantly go off interrupting your enemy and stunning them for that turn as well as the next turn so it's very very strong it is triggered according to the tooltip whenever the opponent attacks but that's kind of a misnomer it adds that it actually just goes off whether you whether you use an attack or a heal or a dodge or even an ethereal or anything and it's very very hard to counter there's very little you can do about it it's pretty rage inducing curious wolvar pup is the only pet with snap trap and so you can throw down both a snap trap and a magma trap at the same time and they can both go off independently or at the same time it's just very annoying to go up against because you never know when it's going to go off it lasts for nine rounds and it basically has approximately a 10 percent chance to go off at any time i mean at any time being on on any round as long as the opponent makes a move so it's it's really annoying to go up against basically the only way to counter it is a critter and hoping that you can either get it to go off on your critter which won't get stunned or using an ability like consume magic on the sun daughter hatchling to remove it on your critter but even if you remove the item unfortunately it is kind of i would say bugged where when the when the item is removed it triggers it and so it still goes off and does the damage to you um if it didn't do the damage i think that it would be a much more fair ability also i wish that it did worked like the tooltip said where it says it places a magma trap onto the ground opponents have a chance to trigger the tra trap each time they attack if it only went off when you make attacks then at least you could heal install out and maybe do a little bit of strategizing around the trap but currently it's just super rng and very toxic for the meta speaking of toxicity next on the list are going to be healers the one of the strongest healers in the game is the magical crawdad he takes less damage from undeads and he has two heals available with renewing mists and wish which is incredibly powerful on the magical crawdad because he is a health health pet so it'll heal him for about a thousand health on just a five round cooldown 
well, not really just a five round cooldown. Five rounds is a lot, but a thousand health is a big heal. He also just tanks by using Surge, so he goes first, and if you're going up against a pet with Flurry or Alpha Strike or a little batter, just a lot of pets that do extra damage or have a higher chance to do extra damage based on going first, Surge just kind of messes with that. So he's just a really tanky, healy pet that's really annoying to go up against. The Hyjal Wisp is another pet with Wish, and he has a dodge, which makes him even stronger than the Magical Crawdad, and he has a ramping damage. So the fact that he is a magic pet, so he can't be one-shot, he has a dodge, so he can avoid pets, uh, pets' attacks, he has a speed-speed breed, so he goes really fast, so his dodge is really useful, and he has wish, makes him really hard to kill, as well as one of the strongest damage outputters of all the healers. Next on the list is the Singing Sunflower, who has the Sunlight Photosynthesis combo. This is the most cancerous combo in the entire PvP meta because there is really no good way to counter it. One way you can is to change the weather, but the Singing Sunflower is an elemental, so if you throw out darkness, he doesn't actually... he isn't actually affected. His heal still heals for a full 83 every turn. It isn't cut in half because he's an elemental. Um, it is still worth it to throw out darkness because photosynthesis heals for twice as much in sunny weather plus the extra 25% healing that all heals do under sunlight. So if you don't have a weather changer, the Singing Sunflower is pretty much impossible to kill. About the only thing you can do is use the next pet on the list, which is the Purple Puffer. Purple Puffer is a very difficult to obtain pet because he is a trading card pet and you have to get him off the auction house basically. And he's pretty expensive since he's rare. But he has a power, power breed, he has pump and surge and healing wave, so he can heal a lot on just a three round cooldown. He can hit really, really hard against elemental healers with pump, and he can just have that priority move surge, which hits pretty hard, especially if you have pump active. Pump will increase the damage you deal by 10%. So your surge, it goes first and heals for about the same as a basic attack, as long as you have pump active. So the Purple Puffer is a very, very strong counter to healing pets, as well as synergizing pretty well with healing pets since he has a heal. Next on the list is the Son of Seath. Son of Seath has the distinction of being the only pet with healing abilities available on all three of his moves. So you can either choose Absorb or Plague Blood for your first move, you have Touch of the Animus for your second move, and you have Drain Blood for your third move. So a uh, very good way to play him as a support pet is to use Plague Blood, Touch the Animus, and Drain Blood. What you can do is you can put dots on an enemy, then you can swap into the Son of Seath, throw up Touch of the Animus or Plague Blood, and now those dots will heal your pet that is in the back line from the dot damage. And then Drain Blood just heals for way too much. Right now it is currently broken, has only a three round cooldown, and does 10% of the enemy's maximum health and heals you for 300% of that. So if you have Sunny Day up and you use a pet with Drained Blood, you are just straight up unkillable. Like, you just heal for so much. The Son of Seath, the Ruby Droplet, the Orphan Felbat, who is the next one on the list is the Orphan Felbat. They all have Drained Blood and so under Sunny Day, they are basically unkillable with Drain Blood because it just heals for so much. The Orphan Felbat is especially good because he's a flyer, he has a speed speed breed, so he's basically impossible to outspeed, and he has a very good self synergy with Fel Immolate and Black Claw. Fel Immolate is a four round dot, and Black Claw is an ability that buffs all damage that an enemy takes by 112, so it synergizes very well with dots and so the Orphan Felbat has a lot of speed and a lot of damage output potential. He can straight up take out Emperor Crabs, who are very good at taking dots. Um, he, he is a very strong pet, and he has a really, really strong heal with Drain Blood, so there's basically no downside to him. Darkness is a relatively good counter to him because it will cut his Drain Blood in half, but he's really just fine even if he loses his racial because he still has 325 speed. The Orphan Felbat is arguably tier 0. 
but he's just not that popular in the meta yet, so people don't know. But he's he's really just that good. He's he's incredibly good and synergizes incredibly well. I should add with some of the best pets in the meta, such as the uh, the Wicked Soul, the Tarot Claw, anything that either has a dot or has a sort of avoidance move because what you can do is you can either throw up a haunt with your Wicked Soul, then throw up a Black Claw and that haunt will just tear through whatever pet it is because they now have Black Claw and Haunt which already hits for a lot of damage. Or you can just throw up your dots and then swap into your Tarot Claw or your Rabbit or something that can dodge and avoid and you have dots rolling while you take no damage and you just dodge and heal and you're just, it's, you're just really, really strong. The Orphan Fell Pet is such an amazingly strong pet. And I have mine named Andy because my awesome viewer Andy donated to me. So thank you very much, Andy. You rock. Next on the list are the flying pets with rain dance. These include the jungle beak, the axe beak, the blood beak, and crackers. All of these have power power breeds, which are four speed faster than the tarot claw, making them very, very, very strong by countering the tarot claw. Uh, the jungle beak. We're just going to call them the Jungle Beaks. The Jungle Beaks have Rain Dance, which synergizes very well with Cyclone, as I've explained earlier in the classic Clone Dance strategy. And even if you're not running Clone Dance, he's still very good by himself because he can use Rain Dance, which heals you. Any heal on a bird is automatically going to make them either Tier 2 or Tier 1. And that Rain Dance also increases your hit and crit chance by 50%. So... You use Rain Dance first to, to heal up, and then you use Nocturnal Strike. Nocturnal Strike does a lot of damage, balanced around the notion that it's only 50% hit chance. It always hits if the target is blinded, so with the Jungle Beak, you don't have a way to blind your enemy, but with Rain Dance, you can just buff that hit chance to 100% with uh, having Rain Dance up for two rounds. So he's really, really good at doing a lot of damage. He can maintain his racial by using Rain Dance and Nocturnal Strike, and then you can just swap out into the back line and wait for his cooldowns to come back. And he's, uh, they're all really, really strong against Tarot Claws because they are faster than them. They can heal, and they can dish out a lot of damage. In addition to having 100% hit chance on Nocturnal Strike, Nocturnal Strike also has about a 55% chance to crit. So if it crits, it almost one-shots pets, and it will one-shot Aquatics, which is pretty funny. Next up on the list are going to be the Dream Whelpling and the Emerald Proto Whelp. These are both very similar pets that are very tanky dragons. They have Emerald Presence to basically not take dot damage, and then either Emerald Dream or Healing Flame for the Dream Whelpling. The Dream Whelpling is slightly better because he has Healing Flame, so you're not locked into your heal for three rounds, and the Dream Whelpling is a very, very strong counter for the Tarot Claw who is probably the best he, the best pet in the game right now. He is faster than the Terra Claw after the Terra Claw has lost his racial, as long as you have the Power Speed Breed. He has Emerald Bite, which does extra damage to all flyers. And so if the Terra Claw doesn't have its hot up, you'll do extra damage. And he can just outheal any Terra Claw's damage, uh, unless they run Claw and get a bunch of crits and high hits. But if they are running Alpha Strike, then the Dream Whelpling will 1v1 any Tarot Claw any day. He's a very strong Tarot Claw counter. And even if you're not going up, a stick, uh, up against a Tarot Claw, both of these two uh, Dragonkin pets are very good at just tanking damage, not dying, and outputting a lot of damage because they have the Dragon Racial. With all these healers in the meta, Darkness teams are very, very popular and some of the best darkness users are the birds such as the dread hatchling and the crow the dread hatchling has the highest attack power of any no darkness nocturnal strike user and he also has shadow talon he's the only pet in the game with shadow talon which does really really strong damage to flyers so he's really good at countering other birds with nocturnal strike or any other birds. He he's just hits really, really hard. He has 337 attack power, which is 8 more than most power power breeds. 
and he has the flying racial so he'll usually still go first even though he has so much kind of stats stacked for his attack power very strong pet with call darkness and nocturnal strike which is just a really really strong amount of damage with call darkness and nocturnal strike you will do about 1300 damage in just two moves <laughs> and you will probably go first with those two moves so he's very very strong very strong tier one pet and the crow is another tier one pet because he has the same call darkness nocturnal strike combo but he has a speed speed breeze so even if he loses his racial he'll still be faster than most pets because he has 325 speed and he has alpha strike to take advantage of it so he is probably the hardest hitting i'm not going to say probably i am quite certain he is the hardest hitting pet with 325 speed he is very 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 strong and just synergizes very well with any darkness team Another pet that synergizes very well with any darkness team is the Frostfur Rat. He is a critter pet with sneak attack or flurry for your first option. Both of these are very good. Flurry can break decoys and is the only ability that is a multi-turn attack that can break decoys in one round. All other abilities are coded differently so they just count as one attack towards a decoy or a bubble. Whereas flurry will instantly take out a bubble or decoy even if you're not faster than the opponent it will instantly just destroy the uh the decoy or bubble so he's very strong and sneak attack is also a very good option because the phosphor rat has called darkness so sneak attack does extra damage to enemies that are blinded and call darkness blinds everything except elementals he can also tank a lot of damage because he has a speed speed breed and he has crouch so he'll usually go first with that crouch basically giving him four rounds of 50 percent reduced damage so he's a very strong tier one pet that synergizes particularly well with darkness teams and counters the meta since he has such strong critter damage which is again strong against undeads up next we have all of the pets that are tier one with specific breeds all of these pets require speed speed breeds uh, for various reasons and primarily because speed is so important in Legion. First up is the Nightshade Sproutling. He pairs very well with a Darkness team and he has Blinding Poison. Blinding Poison is incredibly important to have a speed speed pet because if you go first you will be able to effectively blind them for two rounds. You'll blind them on the first round, and then they will stay blinded on the second round. So they basically lose two turns of damage, while well, you only have to take one turn to blind them. It's on a four-round cooldown, so basically every four rounds, you can get a free turn. You can either swap while they're blinded uh, without taking any damage, or you can just hit them with your Nightshade Sproutling. Nightshade Sproutling has called Darkness, so on a five-round cooldown, you can just do 420 humanoid damage which is pretty nice that's also why he synergizes so nicely with darkness teams and they has lash lash does extra damage if you go first because it hits an additional time so you want to have a speed speed breed if you don't have a speed speed breed you're probably better off going with poison lash and then he can synergize well with poison pets but he's only going to be tier one if he has a speed speed breed and he is pretty difficult to farm so if you can't get one off the auction house, he is he is definitely one of the most difficult to obtain pets now that Warlords is over. Now, the Death Adder Hatchling is a better pet, and the Rose Typen and the Ro Death Adder Hatchling share move sets at least for the Tier 1 set. The Rose Typen probably has a couple cooler abilities it can use. I think it has one, yeah, one unique ability, while the Death Adder Hatchling is stuck with Burrow. But... For both of these, you want to have Blinding Poison, Poison Fang, and Puncture Wound, which all synergize very, very, very well. Blinding Poison, if you go first, like I explained with the Nightshade Sproutling, will give you effectively a free turn every four rounds and block two attacks. And the Death Adder Hatchling has 341 speed with the Speed Speed Breed, as does the Rose Typen, so he's going to go first unless you're going up against a very 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 small selection of pets or flyers so he's pretty well countered by flyers but he is a very strong pet he used to be two tier zero in 
Mists of Pandaria, but all of his abilities were nerfed to four round cooldowns. So now he's just a strong tier one pet and pretty well balanced. He has Blinding Poison and Poison Fang, which both apply poison debuffs. So his Puncture Wound will deal double damage as long as the enemy is poisoned. So that has, he has very nice self synergy there. And he has a dot, which is very nice to have with a Blinding Poison because basically you can put up your dot, blind them, and for two rounds, they cannot attack you while they are taking dot damage. So any sort of stalling ability is always going to be really good, especially in Legion meta where there are so many haunt install teams where you basically throw up a haunt or you just put up some sort of dot and then you stall with dodges or blinds or just avoidance moves of any sort, whether they're ethereals or what have you. Up next is going to be the Sneaky Marmot who is the only tier 1 pet with Blinding Powder. Blinding Powder is a very strong ability because it has the 3 round cooldown that the Death Adder used to have on Blinding Poison. And it doesn't apply the Poison debuff, but it still, other than that, does exactly the same thing. If you go first, it will blind them on that turn and on the next, basically giving you 2 free turns. And it's only on a 3 round cooldown, so if he's first, the Sneaky Marmot is really, really hard to touch. Especially because, for his third ability, he has a choice between Burrow and Smoke Bomb. Most of the time you are going to want to go Burrow because his basic attack doesn't hit very hard since his attack power is pretty low. But with either of these, you can either on a 4 round cooldown with Burrow or a 5 round cooldown with Smoke Bomb, avoid damage for another turn. So, if you use, say, Blinding Powder on your first turn, then you attack then you burrow, then you come up, you take one hit when you come up from burrow, of course, and then your blinding powder is already off cooldown. So you can blind them again, and then you can hit them again, and then you go first on the next round. So in the course of six rounds, you've been hit once, and you've dealt a lot of damage. And then they hit you at the end of the sixth round, but, you know, he's, he's really, 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 really fast with the speed speed breed at 341 speed, and he's just really good at avoiding damage and basically he's a super super control pet. The biggest weakness that the Sneaky Marmot has is his graphics are complete garbage. I don't know who was in charge of it but they need to get fired. Um, he, you look at for example the like the, the the magma rageling and he looks cool he has like flame billowing up on him and he has a sword and a shield and he just looks like a total badass and then you look at the sneaky marmot and he looks like a three-year-old drew him um it's that that's really about the only bad thing that i can say about the sneaky marmot he's an awesome pet and super cool super cool pet that came out with 7.2.5 but he does have three breeds available, and so unless you have the speed speed breed, he's pretty garbage. Because he depends on going first. Up next we have the Bronze Whelpling, who also has several breeds available, and you need to have the speed speed breed because he has a stun. And the stun, well, benefits from going first, because you stun them on the first turn on the turn that you apply the stun, and then they're stunned for the next round. So if you go second, you basically just kind of drag the battle out by an extra turn but if you go first you just gained yourself a free turn also if he goes first his basic attack does extra damage because uh, it just you know does 350 magic damage if you go first and only 252 damage if you go second and then he has liftoff which is really useful to have with a speed speed pet because he will go first with liftoff and be able to dodge tactically if you expect big nukes to be coming in or what have you, maybe a Haunt or a Curse of Doom. Even Curse of Doom can be dodged if you use Liftoff, but you don't need the speed for that. But basically you want to be faster so that you can go first with your Liftoff and maybe outpredict your opponent. And if you don't have the speed speed breed, the Bronze Whelpling is pretty low tier 2, if not tier 3. She, she, she definitely requires uh, uh, the speed from the speed speed breed. After that we have the Fiendish Imp. The Fiendish Imp is one of the very best tier 1 pets in the game and is part of the strongest team being the, again, the Wicked Soul, Tarot Claw, Fiendish Imp setup where he has Nether Gate, Immolation, and Burn. 
So emulation is a very strong ability to, for a humanoid to have because the way the humanoid racial works, they will recover 4% of their maximum health if they deal damage. And emulation, just you apply it to yourself and then you deal damage for nine rounds, whether you're on the front line or the back line with emulation, unless they have a shell shield or sandstorm to block it. So what you can do is you can take some damage on your imp if you have a matchup you don't like, you can use your nether gate. If you go first, which is why you need the speed speed breed, by the way, with 333 speed, he's faster than almost all pets. And then you can swap them out. You can throw up your immolation after you've taken some damage. And then you can swap to the back line with your immolation up so that you will be dealing damage and healing and you can't be hit by anything except AoE. So he's very, very strong. Always has been, always will be. Up next is the rabbit. Rabbit has to be speed speed because otherwise it's not going to be going first against as many pets. And with the, the speed speed breed, he has 357 speed, which is pretty crazy. There are so few pets that are faster than the rabbit with 357 speed. It's You basically are always going to go first. It's very rare for you not to unless you're going up against a team that's specifically designed to go as fast as possible. Uh, he has Flurry, which benefits from going first. Dodge, which benefits from going first because you basically are invulnerable for two rounds with Dodge. And Burrow, which just like Liftoff on the Bronze Well playing, is really advantageous to go first with because you avoid damage on the first round that you go with, and then you deal damage with Burrow before they can attack you. So you might kill him with it. It's, you just want the speed speed breed. You want to be faster with the rabbit, and he's really not that good if he isn't faster than the opponent. Up next is the Iron Starlet. The Iron Starlet is probably a little bit arguable as to whether he's truly tier 1, but I would definitely say he is. He has such great self-synergy in his moves. If you run Wind Up, Power Ball, and Supercharge, the way he works is you can use Wind Up, then you can use Power Ball until you're faster than the opponent. So if they try to dodge you, no big deal. Just use some Power Balls to get faster than them. Then you can use your Supercharge, and your Wind Up will one-shot everything except Elementals or Magic Pets. It's really, really strong. And... Uh, he has several breeds that are available. He's fine with all breeds. Health Health is one of the most popular. I really like the Power Power because he has 341 attack power. And with that Wind Up Supercharge Wind Up combo, he just one shots everything. And he's just a really good pet that uses Power Ball to get faster um, than, your, than your opponent and then one shots him. Up next is the Anubisath Idol who has always been really good. He's probably one of the best he's ever been. Used to be way more RNG dependent and now he is much more much more tolerable to first of all play and go up against. He is so strong because he is a humanoid with a health health breed. So his humanoid racial heals him for more than any other humanoid racial. And he has sandstorm, so he can mitigate damage for everyone on his team by 74 every round by simply of playing sandstorm that blocks most dots for just all of their damage so he basically doesn't take dot damage even if you throw a haunt on him it still only does about 70 damage 100 damage or so it really doesn't hit very hard also you can use deflection so you can either dodge haunts or curses of doom either the application or when it's about to go off or just big nukes so nuking the anubisath idol really isn't an option if he's running deflection which he should, that's the best move. And then he just has a spammable humanoid attack that just hits pretty hard. So he's a very strong, super, super, super tanky pet that is really good at just soaking a lot of damage and dishing out a decent amount of damage. And up next is the eventual Porky pet, my all time favorite PVP pet and probably the best tier one pet. Um, he is very, very, very strong. He's especially strong at countering the meta because he has strong critter attacks, which do extra damage to undeads. He has power balls, so he can go faster than any pet that he wants to by simply spamming power ball. It doesn't do very much damage, but increases your speed by 20%, and it stays for the entire match. So if you put the eventual porcupet with an AoE healer, he himself doesn't actually have very much 
survivability, but he does have spirit spikes to mitigate damage for two rounds, and he can go faster with power ball. So he can just use power ball until he's faster than the enemy team. Then he can use spirit spikes. Spirit spikes re reduces a bit of damage and then reflects a ton of damage that in the in the form of a magic dot that basically instantly does damage. The reason I say it's a dot is because aquatics take half damage from it, which is kind of a glitch. It shouldn't be that way, but just a little side note for you to know. Uh, aquatics do take half damage from the spirit spikes reflection, but um, he also has flank, which takes advantage of the fact that he has power ball because flank deals damage just like flurry, except for the fact that it doesn't break decoy or bubble. And that's kind of a bummer, but it's still really good. He's incredibly good at taking out undeads and generally is very good at countering the meta because the meta is filled with fast pets and the eventual pork pet is able to outspeed those fast pets with either two or three power balls typically. Uh, it's not uncommon for him to be able to clean up an entire team of half health pets all by himself even after he, I've lost my other pets. He's, he's super super strong. Next on the list is the Alpine Foxling. He is very much a support pet and has Dazzling Dance with 325 speed, which will make him faster than a Tarot Claw Hatchling even above its racial. So he is a very good counter for the Tarot Claw Hatchling. He also has Flurry, which benefits from going first. So with Dazzling Dance, his Flurry is going to go first almost, almost, almost all the time and hits extra damage against Undeads, making him incredibly good against the meta. And he has Crouch. So with a speed speed breed, that basically gives him four rounds of 50% less damage. So he's a really good tank that can dish out a lot of damage and supports a lot of other tier one or tier two pets by buffing their speed to by 25%. He is a very strong pet, arguably just tier two, but because he's so good against the meta, he is a tier one pet. And our last tier 1 pet is going to be the Ore Eater. The Ore Eater is a very strong humanoid who used to be tier 0, and with a simple nerf is now a very low tier 1 pet. Arguably just high tier 2, but I would say he's tier 1 still. He's, he's very strong. He's a humanoid with a dot, and so any humanoid with a dot is going to be at least tier 2, because all they have to do is throw up the dot and then swap to the back line. That dot does damage and it heals them while they're safe on the back line where they can't be hit by anything except AoE or dots that have already been applied. He also has Shell Armor. Shell Armor reduces a ton of damage, almost as much as a basic attack, from every single attack made against you. So if there's any sort of multi-turn attack, even if it's... I don't think there's a humanoid... I mean an undead attack, but there are just there's just nothing that's going to hit you that's a multi-turn attack through Shell Armor. It reduces so much damage. It only lasts for two rounds now, and it used to last for three. Back when it lasted for three, and it was only on a five-round cooldown, it still is. It was just plain broken. It, or eaters were so strong, and they were ridiculously impossible to kill, even with a triple undead team. They were so strong. Now with the two-round duration, they're pretty easy to kill, but they're still really tanky and very strong pets. And then he has Body Slam. Body Slam really synergizes well with uh, shell armor because all he has to do is throw up shell armor and then the recoil damage from body slam straight up won't touch your ore eater so he just does a ton of damage on a one round cooldown without taking the recoil damage as long as he has shell armor up so he's a very strong tier one pet but a uh, not as strong as the others very arguably just a tier two pet the last pets I'll be talking about are the tier 0 pets. There are four of them if you include Merkel lot, but I've already talked about him, so I'll just go ahead and talk about these three. The first one is the Blossoming Ancient. He is a store-bought pet that has sunlight and photosynthesis. This combo alone makes him almost impossible to kill, and what makes him way better than any other sunlight photosynthesis user is he has Iron Bark. Iron Bark is a spammable attack that deals almost as much damage as a basic attack and then reduces all damage you take by 74 for each round. So since it's spammable you can effectively just keep a shell shield up on you that reduces all dot damage. So you basically don't take dot damage with uh, as long as you have iron bark up 
and your photosynthesis continues to heal you. If you do start taking a lot of damage, no problem. Just throw up sunlight, throw up your photosynthesis, it lasts for five rounds, and then you swap to the back line and that photosynthesis will keep healing you while you're safe from harm, except for AoE. And there's no AoE that can out heal a photosynthesis under sunlight. It's it's just too much healing. It's, it's really, really broken. And, um, Honestly, it's him swapping to the back line and healing that makes him the most overpowered. He is still really, really hard to beat if he stays in the front and just literally spams Iron Bark while he keeps photosynthesis up and then uses sunlight on cooldown. He's hard enough to beat, but if you do start to whittle him down a little bit and then he swaps to the back line with a full round of photosynthesis up, you straight up just cannot kill him unless you have a weather changer or some sort of really hard aquatic nuke or something it's he's 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 ridiculously broken and needs to be fixed i'm honestly not sure how to fix the blossoming ancient and i'm looking forward to talking about him in a podcast because he needs to be fixed i think the general consensus is the backline healing needs to be nerfed somehow that's just too strong in legion right now and so there's a couple things that blizzard could do about this they could either just straight up nerf backline healing i don't think they ever will do that but they could do that and the other option they could do is just throw out some more abilities like currently we have abilities like nightmare and uh other nice abilities that reduce healing by 50 percent why can't we have an ability like that that does aoe effects that don't allow healing for maybe maybe by 50 percent or even like here's an idea what if it's like a 10 round cooldown that just reduces all healing for the enemy team by three rounds like how amazing would that be that'd be great you know you could you could throw that out then do a setup with maybe a purple puffer it, it would it would be just you know there's a lot of things that you could do about it also if there was the ability to purge at least you could possibly like here's here's an idea what if there's an ability that's like say a five round cooldown and purges all buffs from the enemy team that way if the blossoming ancient throws up his photosynthesis and then swaps to the back line you can just bring in that pet throw out that aoe purge and it will like it's like a priest to a mass dispel it'll just straight up remove the photosynthesis from the blossoming ancient and if he wants to reapply the heal he's going to have to bring that tree back to the front line where we can fight him and we can attack him. So that would be a really fun way to basically bring him back in line where he'd still be a very solid tier one pet, but wouldn't it be just impossible to beat without a counter? So Blossomy Ancient is the first of the tier zero pets, the least common because he is only obtainable with real life money or I think he is obtainable with gold now, uh, the same way like all pets are. But he's from the shop, so you don't see him very often. Also, there is Groot. Groot's another pet that is probably going to start being seen a lot more once people get their druids to uh, to farm him. Um, he's basically exactly the same as the Blossoming Ancient, but he's a little bit slower, so he's not going to get as much benefit from Iron Bark all the time because he might go second. Times where the Blossoming Ancient won't. Next on the list is, of course, the Tarot Claw Hatchling. The Tarot Claw Hatchling needs to be fixed. Everybody knows it's the strongest pet in the game. And uh, it's countered by a lot of things, but it's just so strong. It's a flyer with dodge, so that makes it very strong. It's a flyer with nature's ward. And it's actually the only flyer with nature's ward. And that's what makes it broken, is he can throw up nature's ward, dodge. He goes first because he's a flyer, of course. And so you can't hit him while he's dodging. He can throw up his nature's ward and heal for 123 every round give or take a little i believe it has a little bit of variance like maybe five percent and then he goes first with alpha strike and does a ton of damage so he's very hard to kill because he can take some damage throw up his nature's ward and then just swap to the back line where he can heal to full with nature's ward and you can't touch him without aoe and you definitely can't out damage his his uh his healing with any AoE that is in the game right now. So he needs to be fixed and I talked about how to fix him. It's on my last podcast with Gomrath, so check it out. 
Um, the long and the short of it is there needs to be there needs to be a dragon kin with aquatic damage. Currently, there is no dragon kin in the game with aquatic damage, with the technical exception of the dream whelpling. The dream whelpling has toxic skin, but the way toxic skin works is it does five percent damage. So it's percentage-based damage. It doesn't actually do aquatic damage. So it doesn't matter whether they're elemental or magic or anything. It still does the same exact amount of damage. Um, and Emerald Presence is better, so why would you use it? But it doesn't matter because it's not actual aquatic damage. It, it doesn't actually do extra damage to an elemental. So if they could take, say, a Dragonkin pet with the exact same moose that it, and uh, even breed or anything as a purple puffer they would have themselves a perfect counter to the Terror Claw because you would take weak damage from Alpha Strike and you can do strong damage to the Terror Claw while it has its Emerald, oh sorry, while it has its Nature's Ward up, which by the way is always on a good Terror Claw. Um, it's, it's, it's really sad that they haven't created this counter yet. They don't really need to fix the Terror Claw. I personally think it is fine the way it is, although it's definitely a very strong pet i think it would only be a tier one pet if they did have that counter with a dragon kin pet with say the purple puffers moose set so you could choose surge healing wave or whatever give it healing flame on a dragon pet for lore or whatever and then pump that would be such a great counter to the tarot claw and it wouldn't be a broken pet like a dragon kin with these moves um maybe change whirlpool for something that makes more sense for the dragon and a uh, water jet you can change to a basic dragon kin ability but just give us these three abilities as options that you can all have on a dragon kin pet and you have yourself a perfectly good counter to the tarot claw currently the best counter to him is the dream whelpling who only does basic damage to him with uh with a with a magic attack so as long as he has nature's ward up he's able to tank uh, a dream whelpling pretty well Dream Wolfling's a solid, a solid counter, but the, uh, the 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 Dragonkin with aquatic damage would be a perfect counter, and would really discourage Terror Claws from being so prevalent in the meta, I think. And then there is the. This is probably the strongest pet in the meta. It actually counters the Terror Claw, so it's even stronger and it is the bone serpent the bone serpent is tier zero and there's a simple fix there's a reason why it's so overpowered and there's a reason why it's tier zero and other call darkness nocturnal strike users aren't call darkness users typically are very weak to bubbles or decoys or things that block attacks because they don't have any sort of decoy breakers however the bone serpent has all cooldown based abilities so the best way to use him is to use bone barrage then call darkness then bone barrage then nocturnal strike then bone barrage and then you have one round where you can't do anything so because he's cooldown based he is going to use a rotation that uses bone barrage every other turn and bone barrage is a decoy breaker so if you throw a bubble or decoy it's instantly going to get eaten by bone barrage and then after it's eaten, he just uses Call of Darkness and Nocturnal Strike and destroys you. So the only effective way to counter a Bone Serpent is with a dodge on a pet that is faster than him and does critter damage, which is a rabbit. And so there's really nothing you can do to counter a, a Bone Serpent except use a rabbit. There, there are a couple other pets, but very, very little you can do. And it would make the meta a lot more, a, a lot healthier if they removed bone barrage and replaced it with a basic attack that wasn't a decoy breaker i'm not even saying they have to remove bone barrage completely from the bone serpent here's one option that they could do is they leave nocturnal strike and lift off they take away death and decay nobody uses it everybody hates it it's garbage and then they put bone barrage where death and decay was so you have to choose between called darkness and bone barrage if they do that then you have to use another darkness pet if you want to use nocturnal strike on the bone serpent and also have bone barrage so you at least have to have some kind of synergy between your pets which is fine or you're going to have to use call darkness and nocturnal strike like most people will still do and then your basic attack will be either consume or just a basic attack say peck or bone bite or plague breath just a basic attack that doesn't break decoys 
or bubbles and then there's at least some other ways to take care of this monster it'd still be a very strong tier one pet maybe still tier t tier zero but he wouldn't be quite so obnoxious as he is currently with his current setup being just so much damage it's it's unmanageable and with a speed speed breed he also goes first most of the time so he's super 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 strong really 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 good pet and i i really hope they don't break him when they nerf him but he is going to be nerfed as well i would imagine the tarot claw and i'm pretty sure the boss mansion is going to stay because <clears throat> money so those are the tier zero pets and then here are a couple honorable mentions for the honorable mentions, I'm going to include the Sun and Autumnal Sproutlings with a Power Power Breed. They can heal a lot with Nature's Ward and hit pretty hard with Fist of the Forest and Club. Up next is Trunks. Trunks has Wind Elix Fly and Moonfire, so if you use him on a Synergy team with an Uncanny Luck user such as Turkey or Mr. Wiggles, uh, Trunks hits really, really, really hard. Wind Elix Fly goes first under mo Moonlight, so he has a pretty nice moveset. But by himself, he's really not that good and is kind of just a mediocre tier 2 pet. He requires sy synergy for sure. A couple other pets I want to mention that are just tier 2, didn't quite make the cut for tier 1, is Grace. Grace used to be tier 0 in Warlords, now he is high tier 2. Maybe tier 1, but I just don't think so. Um, he has Skull Toss. Bone Storm or Grave Destruction and Consume Corpse. So he's pretty susceptible to darkness, has a pretty hard time against them, and he's just so, so slow. Um, I suppose I would go ahead and say that he is still low tier one, but still just low tier one. He's, he's really not that good, and um, he's better off using Grave Destruction, which doesn't hit that hard now because it does have the utility to remove objects. Up next is the Black Fuse Bombling. You kind of want to have the Power Power Breed or he doesn't hit all that hard and he's pretty difficult to obtain. He does have a very high attack power of 341 with the Power Power Breed so with how Armageddon is currently coded that is the best breed. Health Health used to be the best because Armageddon used to do percentage based damage similar to Explode but it doesn't anymore. So you want to have the power power breed with flame jet and zap. He is really good at taking out beasts and mechanicals and then just does really strong AOE damage. Also the reason I noted him specifically is because with Merkelot Armageddon will hit for over half of the enemy's team's health and that's that's pretty tier zero if you ask me it's really strong to use righteous inspiration into armageddon and uh, although i haven't personally seen it in several several months in my meta it is definitely alive in some metas and very 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 strong difficult to deal with for sure and last up is Squirky. Squirky is arguably a better pet than the Anubisath Idol, who is a tier 1 pet, but Squirky is tier 2 in my book and Anubisath Idol is tier 1 just because of how they fare compared to other pets. <clears throat> Squirky by himself just isn't that good. With Dazzling Dance, he is really, really good, but st as a standalone pet, he only has 292 speed, so his clobber isn't going to go first most of the time against legion pets and his bubble is pretty easily broken since there are so many bubble and decoy breakers in the game so while he is a very strong pet i decided to purposely keep him at tier two i i, I just wouldn't i just wouldn't put him on the same level as say a wicked soul or a magma rageling or a high wisp he's he's just not at their same level